In this video, we're going to learn about isotopes. Isotopes are used a lot in chemistry and in physics. They're used a lot in nuclear reactions, chemical reactions, and a lot more. And so in this video, we're going to learn about the fundamentals behind isotopes. And by the end of this video, we should be able to describe isotopes using the number of protons and the number of electrons. And we should be able to write an isotopic notation. And so first off, the definition of isotopes is that they have the same number of protons, but they have a different number of neutrons. That's what an isotope is. And if we remember from the previous uh, video, we know that an atom is made up of three things. It's made up of protons. It's made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And to kind of give us an idea of how we can actually get the proton number and the um, neutron number for isotopes, we have to think back to the definition of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So we know that protons have one atomic mass unit, so one AMU. Neutrons are also one AMU. And electrons are actually zero atomic mass units. And these three things are the only things um, that make up an atom. So for an isotope, we can actually say this number of protons plus the number of neutrons will give us the mass, or sometimes what we call the mass number. So these two things added together will give us the mass number. You'll notice that we don't include electrons here. And the reason why is because electrons are pretty much no mass, so we don't have to include them. And as you remember from the previous video, the number of protons is equal to the um, atomic number, which we can find on the periodic table. So when we write isotopes, we have a very specific notation. Um, this is what we call isotopic notation. It's also used a lot in nuclear chemistry. You have your element symbol, you have your mass number, and your proton number, which is Z. So you have your element symbol, and this would be things like C for carbon, uh, N for nitrogen, and so on. Um, this is your atomic mass, also known as the mass number. And over here, you have Z, which is your um, atomic number. The one that's particularly uh, used a lot later on is Z, so just keep that in mind. And as we explore more about atoms and the periodic table, we'll talk more about what, uh, how Z is significant. But for now, we need to know that it's the atomic number. Okay, so let's try an example. So let's say we have a form of three forms of carbon. Um, we have carbon 14, we have carbon 13, and we have carbon 12 three forms of carbon. And these three forms all exist in nature. Uh, carbon-14 is used in radioactive dating, so like figuring out how old previously living things are. Um, carbon-12 is the carbon that we tend to see and ex use on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and carbon-13 is um, less found in nature, but it's, it's still there. So these three are three major forms of carbon. So the question is, Let's try to find the number of neutrons in all uh, in each of these. So first, let's write it in isotopic notation. So we write our element symbol in the middle. The 14 means we have a mass number of 14. And from our periodic table, uh, which we can find over here, carbon has a atomic number of 6. So we can go back up. We can go back up and write in 6 for our um, atomic number. And to find the number of neutrons, again, the number of protons plus the number of neutrons is equal to our mass number. So the number of neutrons is equal to our mass number minus the number of protons. So we just plug in. We have 14 from our mass number. Um, minus the number of protons here, which is 6. 
So 14 minus 6 will give us 8 neutrons. For carbon-13, we do the same thing. So we have carbon, we have 13 on top, and 6 on the bottom. You'll notice that the proton number for carbon is the same, but the mass number is different. That tells us that these two are isotopes of one another. Remember that the proton number cannot change because the number of protons gives us the identity of an atom, or carbon is carbon because there are six protons. If it had one more, it would be something else, and if it had one less, it would also be something else. So we follow the same uh, two formulas here um, that we found before, and we say the number of neutrons is equal to 13 minus 6, so our number of neutrons is 7 neutrons. And then moving on to carbon-12, which is the most common form of carbon that you will find in nature. Carbon-12, we use the same formula as before, so our number of neutrons is equal to 12 minus 6, which would give us 6 neutrons. So again, this, these three forms of carbon are isotopes of one another. You'll notice that each one of these has a different number of neutrons. However, they have the same number of protons. It's our definition of an isotope. Okay. Let's try one more example. So let's say there's a problem that says a form of cobalt is used in treating cancer. And this cobalt isotope has 33 neutrons. Okay, 33 neutrons. And it says, what is the mass in AMU. So the way we do this problem is, again, you know, we have cobalt and we have 33 neutrons. So we first have to figure out the proton number of cobalt. So we go down and we look through our periodic table until we can find cobalt, which is right over here. So it has a proton number of 27. Oops. So we go back up and we say cobalt has 27 and we're looking for the mass number so we don't actually know this number uh, on top we're looking for that so we just follow the same formula we say the number of protons plus the number of neutrons will give us the mass number or the mass so we have the number of protons which we found which is 27 plus and the number of neutrons is given to us in the problem so we have 33 will give us our mass number. So our mass is equal to 60 AMU. This is our answer. OK, so this wraps up isotopes and isotopic notation. Um, be sure to do a few problems to see if um, you can do some questions that will appear on the MCAT.